But the news of yesterday, uh, we'll talk about, I think, some in the podcast. And we'll talk about top of next hour. Mike Boonholzer was fired right after the show yesterday. Uh, I do want to get Dan Byer's opinion. And the reason is, one, I respect it. Two, Bucks fan. Um, but I, I just, I, I want to say this. This is a really, really, really good moment. Okay, so yesterday, um, I'll let you in a little bit. My son had a workout. Darren Collison, a former NBA point guard, uh, lives eh, sort of in my area, whatever. And he is a renowned trainer. And he has a, um, he has, there's a, a place that, I don't know if you guys know about the underwear, the clothing company Ethica. Anyway, he has a place there where he works anywhere from kids to college to NBA players out. Right? And my, my son was lucky enough I was to I get him in, get him on the schedule and get a workout. And so I was talking with DC for a little bit and I said, like, do you see the bud got fired? He's like, no way. That's terrible. You know, like Giannis didn't play two and a half of the games. And we had just been talking about how, like, man, how do you not put Giannis on Jimmy Butler? And Giannis was just trying to do what the coaches want. And the coaches didn't make adjustments. And then he gets fired. Um, and he's like, and his brother just died? Like, that's awful. I, I, I want everybody to understand. Okay? Sports doesn't care. It just doesn't. Right? Sports isn't about fair or unfair. It's about there's only one. Okay, only one unforgivable sin in sports, losing, losing. So look, I'll get to in a second, the, the Warriors game. I, I just give you my thoughts. Okay. Different ownership group than hires you. Everyone knows when a new group comes in, they want to do their own thing. And if we're fair, again, listen to some of these podcasts. Kyrie Irving's even said, and I agree with him. The Nets were very likely to come out of the East and probably going to win the championship going back. Was that two years ago when they crushed the bucks? Kyrie gets hurt. KD somehow miraculously gets it to game seven, has his foot on the line. Otherwise it doesn't go to overtime. They win it. And remember the bucks advanced out of that series. If Kyrie didn't get hurt, the nets win that series. They're better. Additionally, they played the Suns in the finals. The Suns were losing in that series until Anthony Davis got hurt against the Lakers. Remember, remember, was it was it LeBron or was it Anthony Davis is backing down the Suns and all the Lakers were were making fun of the Suns, right? And then all of a sudden, Anthony Davis got hurt and the Suns became kind of the talk of the town. Okay, the Nuggets didn't have uh, Jamal Murray. Okay, the Warriors weren't healthy. The West wasn't the 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 Clippers. That was the year that I believe uh, Kawhi Leonard tore his ACL, right? Had a partial tear of the ACL. All these things happened, and that allowed the Suns to advance to the finals. They weren't really the best team in the West, regardless of what their record was. Remember, the Lakers wanted to play them. The Bucks, regardless of record, they weren't going to win the East. The Nets were going to win the East. So I actually looked at that as the outlier. The rest of the playoffs, the argument against Bud going back to Atlanta, going to Milwaukee was, he's one of those, we do what we do, and you make others adjust, and he's a very slow, if ever, to adjust in-game. Last year, they didn't have Chris Middleton. They just won a championship. You're not going to fire him. This year, you listen to Giannis, and he was disappointed that they didn't make adjustments, i.e., he didn't guard Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler goes crazy the last two games. And despite the fact he didn't play two and a half of the games, they fired Mike Budenholzer. It's terrible. Bud is a good dude. Nobody has a bad word to say about him, but he's not an adjuster. And you have to adjust in the playoffs. Look at the Warriors. They look like a completely different team last night from what they look like in game one. Uh, Dan Byer was the firing justified from a Bucks fan and noted sports radio talk show host perspective. Yes, I do believe it was. I agree. I agree. There's a lot at stake. Um, and there's, there's a lot at play. And you can take the outcomes, but you also actually have to look to the future in terms of there is no time to waste. Um, there's a real possibility, Doug, that uh, the post Giannis 
stature of this team, status of this team, mm-hmm. could be similar to the post Tim Duncan, post Kawhi Leonard, San Antonio Spurs. And Mike Budenholzer, by the way, is a former Spurs guy. Sure, right? like there's you, a lot, there's some similarities there. And and you don't know how long Giannis has two more years on his contract uh, before the ability to opt out. So you have to make the most of this two years, and that is one of the main reasons why I think that you have to um, you have to pull out all the stops. And there wasn't enough there to keep Mike Budenholzer despite the injury in the playoffs. Um, yeah, there just there wasn't. This move had to be made. And 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 I feel terrible, terrible. But his brother died, right? It's 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 just awful timing. Yeah, it's why I think it actually took them a while. I don't think that they wanted to do it immediately because his brother passed away around Game Four. I think immediately, like he was in a in an accident, um, either prior to or just after Game Four. Right, and and like I'm sorry, it's it's unfair. Like they they probably come out of the series if Giannis isn't hurt, and and doesn't miss two and a half games. Correct, but that is the other question: is if the Bucks, let's say Giannis miraculously comes back. They win the series. Uh, remember, they blew leads uh, twice in Game Four and Game Five. Um, meltdowns in those games. Correct. So people can look at the big and, picture. I mean, Giannis missed thirteen free throws, and they had all those turnovers in Game Five. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, but the the other part of it is is if they would survive, if they held on and won. Yep. Were they playing at a championship level, or were they? I mean, they had the best record, so yeah, they were in contention. But the team that played in the first round of the Heat, I don't know. If they wouldn't beat Boston. I'll tell you that much. No. And so, no. yeah, there's there's a lot to point to. And I think people love to do this of, of why a guy should have stayed and should go. But it's almost of what's ahead for them. Like, you couldn't keep him another year. Giannis has one year. Then you don't know who to bring in. And now you've got almost, you know, a weird lame duck situation because I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Giannis leaves Milwaukee after this contract. He's given the city and the franchise absolutely everything. He's the greatest buck ever. Um, and for as loyal as he has been in his comments, it is human nature to look around and be like, hey, maybe not that I want to team up with someone else, but maybe what is it like on that side of things? Right. I want to try something different. Yes. You're allowed to try something different. Yep. You, you, are, you are allowed, you know? And I think that that's it's the reality to it. And I also think you know new ownership group, and they're going to try and you know change some things up. And and, and this is what happens.